Thompson had already traveled over one half the speed of sound, but it was still not fast enough to set a world record. The car had to be brought back to the Thompson garage. In order to create the needed additional power, superchargers had to be added to each engine and the body altered to allow for the wind scoops. In five months, Thompson and his loyal crew were ready to go back to Bonneville. The situation was tense. The conditions were far from perfect. The salt was unusually rough that year, yet Thompson was still intent on making the run as quickly as possible against everyone's advice. The salaries alone for USAC officials were about to bankrupt the operation. For Mickey, it would have to be now, or possibly never. On race day, we had our share of trouble with the gusty winds on the salt flats. Driving through erratic winds at high speeds could be disastrous. I was in and out of the car all day long. Added to that, my friend, Roland Portwood, a devout Christian, ran up to me with tears in his eyes and pleaded with me not to get back in the car. He said he had a vision that I went out of control and crashed. Nick, they don't want us to go. Winds are bad. No, no, I want to go now. Winds are two or three over the limit. Tell them I want to go now. I can drive through it. Push me in. There you go. Come on. No problem. I'll be okay. <laughs> Go again! At about 3 p.m., the wind died down, and Mickey was back again in Challenger 1. <laughs> 210 miles per hour in low gear, 315 in second, and in third, who knows? mile, Mickey Thompson and his Challenger 1 set a new one-way land speed record of 406.6 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs>